Welcome back. How are you feeling? Feeling great, man. It's been a long time. Been uh, been really, really trying to be patient, but it's been a, it's been a long time. So I'm ready to go. How do you stay positive during that time when you're when you're not fighting? I'm a busy, busy guy, man. I got four daughters. I got uh, my gym open last year. Um, I have a lot going on, you know, outside of just fighting. So it's uh, I'm always busy. So I just gotta, you know, get focused on that stuff. You know, ramp it up a little bit more. But besides that, that's you know usually how I deal with everything. It's so work out, go to work, and I get past it pretty easy. What was the reason for the the length? Was it a, a decision you made? Was it that you no, were hard to find fights? No, I was uh, I was probably annoying Shelby. I was you know hitting him up like every other week. I was like, hey, this guy dropped. Let me in. Let me in. Like so, um, you know, it's just timeline. I think that they wanted to give me a big matchup, and I think that you know people like long camps. I personally don't care for them. I like to do short notice because I'm always training. So, um, you know, who knows what it was? But you know, I'm ready to go, and uh, I'll stay active this year. What uh, was the feeling like when you finally got that call? Oh, it was great. It was like uh, I, it was great because I was like December, January. I didn't even think about January. Honestly, I was looking for November, or December, and I kind of forgot about January and February. And then um, those fights got booked. And then February was booked. And then it was like March. I was like, oh my gosh, man! Like, you know, give me a short note or something. And they they finally gave me a fight. And it was like uh, the beginning of January or maybe mid January. They gave me the fight for April. I was like. Well, I can't really complain because, you know, they gave me a fight. But, you know, it's not tomorrow. It's, you know, six or three months out. So whatever. So when do you start a fight camp when you know that far in advance? I, I am in fight camp mode all the time. My weight's always good. My cardio is always good. I train. Like, I, I truly love this, like, the whole aspect of the whole thing. I, the only thing it's like that's a little different for me is that I cut out some carbs, like, when it gets closer to fight time. But my training is always, you know, where it needs to be. My cardio is, you know, always where it needs to be. And uh, my weight's always good. So, like, uh, for me, the only thing that changes is maybe some more intense sparring. That's about it. What were your thoughts when you heard the opponent? Um, this is a matchup that almost got made years back in a different, you know, LFA, a smaller promotion. Um, you know, it's something that we're both from Texas. He was coming up. I was coming up. We almost fought. We didn't. And, you know, nothing was really said after that. But he uh, – I'm actually pretty tight with uh, Cowboy Cerrone. Him and my coach are, you know, they used to be teammates. And uh, so when he talked all that smack with Cowboy, it kind of lit some fire underneath me. I was like, dude, like, this guy is so arrogant. Like, he talks so much smack. And um, so ever since then, I kind of just haven't liked him. So definitely uh, when I got the matchup, I was excited for sure. What was he saying? Uh, you know, look back at the press conference. He just he talked about how old Cowboy was and how he was just going to tool him and he was going to do whatever he wanted to him. And uh, he, you know, he talked a lot of smack, man, like a lot of smack. So, um, you know, it is what it is. It wasn't about me. I don't take anything personally, really. I just like, you know, there's some people that I just I don't really not like a whole lot of people, but I just don't like him. And I don't know what it is, but some like it's something about his face. I don't know. Does he know you don't like him? Or I don't know. Be the first He'll time? know now. I don't know. <laughs> I'll ask him. Hey. Um, yeah. So you guys haven't run into each other at the hotel or anything? Or? No, no, no. No, I would never, like, even if I didn't like him, I would never go up and, like, hey, we're going to fight. We're going to be there Saturday night. We're going to fight. And, um, you know, things will be settled then. Imagine that you guys had fought when you originally were talked about how different are you guys now than than that would have been then uh completely different i think we were both undefeated at the time um he's just a different uh he 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 still thinks of his, he still thinks of himself as the undefeated fighter and where i've i've been humbled um you know where you know you can learn from these mistakes that you've made and things like that and i think that he hasn't learned from that and i don't care what he's changed with this camp he's still going to have a problem with my cardio and i'm still going to be coming forward i'm still going to be looking for a finish in that third round when he's dying so um you know i think that there's so much has changed i think we both have had those wars for sure but i think that uh, he's he's lacking that ability to like learn from his mistakes and he definitely comes out aggressive every single fight does the same thing every single fight and you know i'm going to take advantage of that i'm going to come forward he's going to come forward and i'm not going to stop and he will Sounds like you think it's going to go to the third round. Is that what you're expecting from him? I'm expecting a third round battle, but I'm looking for a finish. So wherever that comes, I'm looking for a finish. Do you feel like you're a more dangerous fighter right now because you're coming off a couple losses and you have that animosity towards him? 
No, I don't have animosity towards him. Um, I, I'm a more dangerous fighter right now because I, I have just grown so much in this last year. It's, it was a rough, rough year. So, like, I have grown so much from this last year, and I'm just a completely different person all around. And, um, you know, my style had to change because I had an injury, which I've never had really. And um, so that put a lot of pressure on me to, like, learn different things and, you know, become a different fighter. And um, mentally I've grown so much from this last year. It's been, you know, a, a huge trials, huge errors, and things have just, you know, went up and down. And, um, you know, I'm in a great spot right now mentally and physically, just, you know, through the roof right now. I'm ready to go. Thank you. Hey, Damon. Um, how do you um, decide, like, how do you decide – on how much you're going to train at your Fortis and Saves Fortis. I'm at both every day. So I, I, I go to my place in the morning. So 5.30 in the morning classes, I'm there, um, you know, teaching either kickboxing or like an MMA fit, like workout-wise. And then um, I go to Dallas uh, around like 8, 8 a.m. So I'm there from like 5.30 to 8, go to Dallas from 9 to 12. I still train some of my clients there. Um, I train there in the morning. And then I go back to my gym, and I train there in midday and at night. So I'm doing two and three days, four to five days a week. Um, you know, I'm working like 19 hour days and I'm, I, I have so much energy and so much mentally, uh, I, I'm just so free right now, like with everything and just like a uh, different level for sure. What's the difficulty of being a gym owner? Uh, you know, just learning as you go is a crappy way to do things. And I, I've been around the gym my whole life, the gym scene. So like you think you know things that you don't have a freaking clue about. And so, and really just like. Kind of like right now, I've got some really good teammates and really good friends that are taking over some classes for me and helping me out with things. And so, just having the ability to learn how to like let some stuff go to other people and like let them control that, um, it's it's hard to do, but uh, it's very necessary because you can't be there teaching every class, doing everything like that. So just learning as you go is it's been a rough one, but you know I'm I'm at a really good point right now. How much advice did Safe give you? Oh yeah, every day. Like I'm always like. Uh, hey, you know, what do I got to do to get these numbers up? What can I, you know, whatever. It may just being around him for all these years, uh, learning how to coach and learning how to speak to people, learning how to, like, carry yourself. And, um, you know, it just I learned so much from him. And it just he's, he's one of the best coaches to ever do it. And uh, to learn from him as a gym owner and a coach, like, you know, both ways, it's been great. After you're done fighting, like, and obviously you like coaching, um, like, is that is that? Is that what your your, your role is going to be? I'm doing it now. So like like the it, very selfish part of me wants to stay here for 300 the whole week. I want to be here the whole week and you know just eat all of it up because I know it's such a big week. But I uh, I have guys fighting on the 12th. I have guys fighting uh, on the 18th. And like I have guys fighting regularly now. So like for me to get back and make sure they're they're training the right way, make sure that things are going good for them, um, is important to me. And I'm going to be back in Dallas uh, on Monday night teaching classes and. Um, doing my thing and um, you know I just uh, I've grown a lot from it and just mentally just in a different spot with it and like getting to teach them things that I uh, haven't done in 10 years or more um, to kind of refresh myself with the fundamentals has been a really good thing for my style as well. Since your last fight Ilya Taporia became the uh, champion and I just yeah. wanted to like ask you know being a former opponent did you see like how special he was while watching tape on him and then obviously no. fighting him? Uh, well, when, whenever, whenever, before we fought, uh, he had nothing online, like nothing. And so I'm like, oh, this dude's a, he's a, he's a black belt. Like, I don't care about a black belt. I don't care about jujitsu. Like, I don't care who you are. Like, I can grapple with you and uh, if you're the same size as me. So, like, whenever they gave me the matchup, I was, and I told Coach, I was like, hey, uh, I want this fight. They think this guy's, you know, awesome. Whatever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take him down at seven because he, 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 all he showed was grappling. It was like some videos of him grappling or some, you know, fights of his where he took the guy down or whatever. And so I was like, oh, there's no threat on the feet. I'm going to take the fight. And um, coach is like, no, they think this guy's going to be the next champ. They think he's going to like whatever. I'm like, whatever. Like, I just want the fight. And so we kind of had like uh, he he didn't want me to take it. And I took it on kind of a you know shorter notice camp. And I. Uh, but I was not expecting uh, his boxing and his movement, his speed. Like, he, he's a very talented dude, man. So to see him, to lose to him and to see him go on and win, to see Danny Inge up there, you know, winning. And, you know, I always know when Danny Inge was a tough fighter and a very special fighter. And so I'm happy to see him uh, continue to win after he beat me. Um, you know, like, uh, I wasn't 
the same person for that, that fight. I didn't have my, my pec. I tore it right before the Pat Sabatini fight, and I got lucky as hell and caught him with a front kick and because um, that would have been rough to wrestle him the whole fight. And so, um, you know, like to lose to those guys and to see them doing well, it's, it's pretty cool. And I didn't lose to Billy. I don't care what anybody says. I didn't lose that damn fight. So I, I'm not on a two-fight skid. I'm on a uh, no contest and a loss. So, Do you regret taking the Taporia fight now? No, I know. I don't regret anything. I don't really, like, there's not a lot in my life that I regret. So, like, very few things. And um, definitely not, not one of them, no. Thanks, man. Good. So, 